Wild one, are you there? What's good? And you know who this is, baby. The number one podcast in America dedicated to all you kings and queens of color, homies and homets, shotters, woo gals, G boys, and charges. The one and only Jerk Jalob and Collard Greens Podcast. Wagwan, how you day? What's really good, everybody? In today's episode, the JJC panel discusses some of their most life-defining and changing experiences, including fears of goals missed, experiencing the stress and anxiety from life's challenges and adversities. Life isn't easy and sometimes not so fun, but the challenges we have faced and will continue to face will make us into the men we are meant to be. So grab your best bottle of scotch, or throw on some lofty music and prepare to listen to the experiences we have all had and what has brought us to this moment. If you aren't already a follower or perhaps tuning in for the first time and would like to learn more about the show, then definitely check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Jerk Jaloff Collar Pod. Additional ways to reach us provided in the outro at the end. On today's episode, we got G Ransom, we got yes, the franchise. <laughs> what up? What up? You we know got what I mean? Glenn in the building. Yeah, your boy G is back. The jerk is back. The jerk. The jerk <laughs> is back. The J well, is back. That can be interpreted JJC. two ways, bro. <laughs> exactly. I, I, yes, rightfully so. I, I can be a jerk. I am spicy. So muy caliente. There we go. Ooh, muy caliente. But, um, I mean, as if we need any more spice when, right when? now, right? It's very hot. I'm frustrated and it is hot and I'm very hot. <laughs> you look hot. I, I, I'm, I'm like, listening. You look, look yeah. You're literally, your forehead oh, shining through the camera. Oh, I can't see this man glistening. You got that glow? <laughs> that glow. My Bruce Lee glow. Bruce Lee Roy glow, bro. It's no lotion. Glow. No Glenn, lotion, no oil. Glenn is the cocoa butter. It's okay. Yeah, it's, it's, oh a na- it's a natural. God. Natural. Natural Bruh, cocoa butter. It's like coming oh from my, my scalp. It's like melting from the scalp. Yeah. <laughs> and it's your boy D Black actually hosting today. Y'all should be used to me by now. So y'all should, I don't want to hear no complaints. No complaints, eh? Not one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, did, I, I, I come and they chop you. Fine, fine. <laughs> oh, man. But shout out to Dre. Shout out to Chunky. They, they can't be with us today. But we're going to hold them down. Indeed, indeed. Uh, I got a question for the group. So a question for the group. This is actually from the franchise, which has actually had me postulate in my response. I don't even think I fully got it yet. Pick one. Loyalty or respect? Hmm. I'm going to let franchise go first because he's the one that came up with this. So I'm very yeah. curious. Yeah. Loyalty or respect? <laughs> I know. So, so I just want to give credit to Drink Champ. Uh, I, got, I stole this question from from them you know great podcast if you haven't uh checked them out but yeah if i have to pick one of the two you know i think you need a dose of loyalty and respect in a relationship oh, bro he already doing it but, <laughs> but listen though listen to what i'm trying to say can i finish what i'm gonna say my bad my bad, my bad. Send okay. some flip-flopping okay <laughs> okay y'all just let me talk okay so I said, ideally, if you want, if you have a relationship, it's, it's good to have a, a dose of both. But if I have to pick one of the two, I would pick respect. For and the reason for that is because loyalty, I think the cost is too heavy for me to ask someone to carry. You know, people are in jail because of loyalty. You know, you know, respect mm, creates create create dialogue between between friends, right? I mean, I want you to respect me enough to speak your truth, right? And I and if I'm doing something wrong, let me know that, bro, what you did was fucked up. Let's talk about it because you respect me at that level that we can have that conversation. And as a friend of mine, and it's up to me to also respect your your like the conversation that you are having with me. I have to I have to respect that 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 pullback, you know. Mm-hmm. but loyalty like you see me doing something fucked up be like you know what that's my boy i'm gonna ride with him like yo like that's not that's not really what i want in a relationship man i want somebody who's mm-hmm. gonna see what i'm doing like yo bro that was fucked up you should do it. you should have done it this way and i'm gonna respect that 
you know, don't don't let me don't watch me fall through the crack or down the tunnel or something and just be like, you know what, if we if he going down, I'm going down with him. That's that's cool. But that's not what I'm looking for. Hmm. Gotcha. So I guess in a way, couldn't that also be looked upon as respect also? Like, if that's something that someone's expecting, wouldn't you do that as a sign of respect for that person? As apart from it just being straight up loyalty, like it could be an indicator that respect is needed. Like, hey, you know what? I admire or I uphold this person to such a high regard. I'm willing to take a bid if I have to. I mean, that's more of a loyalty to me. No, nah, that's not. I mean, I don't know. Because would you take a bid for somebody you didn't respect? But you can have loyalty without respect because if you have, okay. like, for instance, say you, you, if you're holding something over someone, you have power over that person. You know, they may not, they may not in a heart of heart respect you, but they have no choice but to follow you because there's consequences associated with it. So isn't that, I mean, that not that what loyalty is, you know, like it doesn't have to be to the point where they have to want to adhere to it or it's just, that's what they're doing. This is what you exactly. have to abide by. Exactly. It's like having a, having a boss and let's, let's look at it from a gang culture, right? It's mm-hmm. like supposed to follow whoever or the leader corporate. is. <laughs> oh yeah. Or even corporate, right? <laughs> yeah, corporate yeah. gang. Corporate gang. Any gang, right? And it's, as long as you have a leader, you, your role as the, as the person at the leader, you're supposed to follow your leader's, you know, direction, even if you respect that person or not. So like, so if I don't even fuck with that person, but they are the, my lead, I still have to really do what the, whatever they, whatever they said I should do. So it's like, that's part of the, the loyalty, but I don't, I don't look at it as respect because if I don't fuck with you, I don't, I don't really respect you, <laughs> but, but you could tell me like, Francis, you need to get this paper or to get this pre- uh, presentation done tonight. You know, I have to get it done tonight, even though, even though I don't even fuck with what you have to say. But I know you got to, I, I got to get my paper. I got to get that check, you know, so. You're loyal you get, to your craft. You're loyal to your responsibility. I'm to, exactly. I'm loyal yeah. to, to what my tax and what I need to deliver at that moment. So, mm-hmm. so for me, yeah, I don't know. I'll let you guys speak more on it. Yeah. You know, I just wanted to jump in there and just kind of to dig in there as well just to get as many aspects of it as possible yeah in all sense i do agree succinctly that if i were to choose one it would definitely be respect because i feel loyalty is a two-way street in a sense and using america as an example you have a lot of people with different views different perspectives and at most i think all you can actually expect from other people is that hey i don't have to abide to what you do but just respect what i believe in and allow me to exist and coexist in this pretty much teach tolerance in this sense when you have so many different views, perspectives, and uh, beliefs. So if I were to choose one, it would definitely be respect. And even using corporate once more as an example, like I may not respect my boss. I may respect the organization, but I may not respect my boss because I do not like him as an individual. I may not like the way he does things, but if he asks me to do something, you know, that's a sign of loyalty in a sense. But at the same time, I respect myself enough to not be put into that negative light or to be looked Mm -hmm. as as someone that is unloyal or not trustworthy. So I think in a way there, there's a little sameness there. There's a common thread in a sense where you do things out of loyalty, out of respect. Uh, Loyalty could be one of those actions. Like, hey, I respect you. You know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to entrust in what you say and do. But I feel like at the same time, there's levels to it. Like two people can be loyal to each other, perceiving that they're on that same level. But respect can also be like a down looking up type thing as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, there may not be a level there. But if I had to pick one, definitely I agree. Respect, because even like I said, using the American as an example, you need it. See me, um, I'll, it really depends on the situation. I will say, all right, in general life, I, I would say respect also because of it helps in my opinion you foster better relationships you know as Fran was you know emphasizing and then you also I feel like the the relationships you also have are more genuine you know it's not all this kind of bougie kind of mess when you really respect someone and they respect you back or you know it, you know I feel like the the relationship can really foster and you can grow and you can basically better each other but I'm gonna be real. If we're talking about in a corporate sense, I rather kind of have the loyalty, just because 
<laughs> you can because here's the thing. No, no, but hear me out. Because in I have people that I work with that respect me, and I'm and I'm and I respect them too. I'm glad we have that relationship. But the problem is that sometimes they respect me so much that they like they are they, well. We have so much respect in the relationship that it may challenge me getting things done, or maybe even the line between who's the boss, who's not the boss, can kind of get blurry because we have such a close collaboration with each other like they can they respect me enough that they can be themselves and be honest with themselves and yeah. vice versa i respect them versus sometimes i just need them to focus on the task so i just rather you have be loyal and do what i need you to do and focus on the task get the objective done and let's move on you know versus but you know how i feel you know sometimes i don't like doing this and it's mid it's midday it's hump day it's wednesday <laughs> i ain't trying to do Yo, this on yeah, hump day. because you know what I mean? cause this the reason why you said that and i and i respect that answer is also because of the position that you play in your organization mm. so we just talked about it Glenn just said it like if you you were looking down versus look up looking looking up right so like the loyalty is kind of reversing your situation for like for most people as a as a as an employer, for more company want their the employees to be loyal because you know you invest into them, you pour so much, you know, you train them, you do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't want that same person to just leave after a year. You know, you want them to be loyal to your company for like as many years as possible, pretty much until you pretty much done with them, so you can dump them. Somebody, you know, <laughs> hey, hold on, hold on, hey, hold on. I mean, come on now, come on now. I'm, hey, I'm Here's just saying, let's like, keep it real, right? Let's keep it real. No, okay, hey, let's right. let's keep, keep it real. You keep it real, right? But from a corporate perspective, from a corporate standpoint, general corporate standpoint, standpoint, perspective, they yeah. want you to be loyal so you can stick around until they are done with you. So, so yes, the That's answer you gave, the answer you gave is like, well, I'm saying, but you you a leader, right? You a leader within your space. So you want your like the people who report to you to be loyal to you. So like yeah. it makes sense, right? I think, and again, it's not that I don't want there to be respect within my team or within my group. I just think that sometimes this the respect of like being able to be so transparent and saying like it's not like you have it's not like you legitimately sick. You just literally not feeling like working. Like you you we we on that level, and that is that can be kind of frustrating because. We have so much respect; it gets in the way of you being loyal to the task. If, does that make sense? I feel like I don't know, it but does. anyway, <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo, Glenn, Glenn's about to say something. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I just kind of feel like the two go hand in hand. Like you respect an organization, you know, you do what the organization expects you to do. You respect your partner, you do what your partner expects you to do. So. It's like taking out just from the corporate sense. I think that comes into play with our friends as well. I'll let y'all know now. I'm not taking a bid for anyone, but you know, I will be there with the it's free. Too many it's too costly. <laughs> he said that many of times. We already it's know you're not costly. catching no charges. That's like, it's too costly. He's not exactly. catching no it's, charges. It's too costly, for nobody. Bro. And I respect y'all. I respect y'all enough to talk you out of the situation and say, "Hey, my brother, you may not want to do this. You know, this <laughs> may not end up well." And I'm let you know up front out of respect. And loyalty, I'm not taking the bid, which I feel oh like is God. that faulty street oh, so culture. So you guys, you guys are picking both. See, when I when I answer that way, you guys start. Nah, I am picking respect. both. My answer but, is still respect. So I know, but respect. but yeah, but when I first started, I was like, yeah, this, so you need a little bit of both in in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <but. laughs> all right, all right. It's all good. I just I just want to call y'all out. Yeah, you're rubbing off on us, bro. You're rubbing <laughs> off. Oh my god. Yo, y'all would like this when I met y'all. It's not capping. All right. Oh man. Well, I mean, we we, we ask we ask y'all the listeners, y'all tell us what y'all think. Loyalty or respect, respect versus loyalty. I think the scenario is what really you know helps you pick, but you guys let us know. You know, and as we kind of enjoy this sweet, sweet conversation, it brings us to our Rep Yours Sublime Donuts. Sublime Donuts, founded by Kamal Grant. Treat yourself to a yummy treat from Sublime Donuts at their North Druid Hills or Georgia Tech locations. Delicious flavors include Orange Dream Star, White Chocolate Peach Flitter, Deep Dark Chocolate, and more. And you can also try ice cream and donuts burgers figure that one out it is delicious 
Uh, you can check them out at sublimedonuts.com. That's sublimedonuts.com. Love me and a good donut. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, let's chop it up. All right. So we kind of get into our first question, right? All right. What are your biggest fears? And 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 I want y'all to be, it's okay to admit if you're still afraid of the dark. You know what I mean? <laughs> but don't, don't, don't hold back. Don't hold back. So Slossy, what are your biggest fears? That that and I gotta say first, shout out to the title, Wet in Mongo Do. You don't know what's that like piggin, pigeon, as am I saying it correctly? Like pigeon. the Yoruba English combination broken english broken english yeah <laughs> and that means what am i gonna do what did mongo do what am i going to do so and that encompasses the idea of fear and situations that you feel like you cannot get out of but i would say to answer this question my biggest fear and i gotta say this first i'm a huge advocate for fear i feel like fear gets a bad rep because fear itself can make and save lives like let's be real like by definition fear is an anticipation or awareness of a danger like a lot of the times it's not something that's unknown to us it's us being aware that hey there's a consequence for this and this is what i want to prevent not saying that fear used poorly can prevent us from achieving things without a doubt but my strongest fear is an idea or the idea that I will leave this earth without accomplishing all the things that I set out to do, like, Mm. and hopelessness. So that fear of failure and hopelessness, I would say are some of the things that set me back in like my early development as a young adult. And so even till this day are things I have to constantly remind myself to be aware of and constantly challenge. And I think we'll probably get into like the seven archetypes of fear, but just to answer the question, you know, and I think y'all like this actually, just like habits in us that evoke these reactions. But yeah, I'll say hopelessness and fear being stuck out on a wave runner. In the, like I've never been on a wave runner until this day. And that's because <laughs> as many times as I've been to Jamaica, I will never ride a wave runner or some people call them jet skis because I always have this idea. Oh, what if I run out of fuel or something and I'm in the middle, in the middle of the ocean? ocean. And How I, I get back? And I can't swim, y'all. So island hey, boy, I cannot swim. Exactly. And I'm Dude, like, your fear should I... be water, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, you know what? You because the sink, and when the sink fills up with water, you just get nervous. You get nervous in the shower, don't you? <laughs> I know. Because I respect my fear of hopelessness, and I'm loyal, loyal. to it. You will not see me on a wave runner. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's that's my tip. <laughs> no, that's, what about you, friend? That's, that's so funny. No, I actually really like the way uh, the way Glenn said that because yeah, fear kind of make you, you know, question things. You know, make you, he's like that pause. Like, is this ideal or not? And I think the part where it becomes positive or negative is when we let it stop us from doing something that's positive that will actually enhance our life, right? So for me, like. So in the question is fears, it didn't say one, it didn't say fear. So it means you could allude into multiple. So when I start naming a few things, don't don't you dare come in, don't, don't come at me. <laughs> Let them out. Oh, 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 oh. okay. <laughs> Wait till my uh, room. <laughs> anyways, but you know, actually, actually fear of flare, failure is actually one of one of mine, actually, as well. So Glenn, like we are on the same, on the same plane with that because. I think that actually came from just growing up and, you know, just not, not just having a lot a low self-esteem and really overcoming that as I got older, you know? So, so that was definitely something that I, that I still, you know, struggle with sometimes, but it's really funny though, because it's really fair of failure on, in my personal life, not at work because at work, I'm that person that, go up to my boss and always ask for more. So, and I, I think I'm, I challenge myself at work, but when it comes to like things in my day-to-day life, if I'm not familiar with it, it makes me question myself if I'm going to be good at it, if I'm going to be good enough at it, you know? So, so I think it, it comes into, into play more in my personal life than in my person, in my career. And, but the other thing that, I, that I'm actually really scared of is height. I'm scared of heights. Mm. Uh, I didn't know if you were going to admit that because I already know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared of hike, bro. Like, uh, yo, like, even when we go hiking, like, my, so my wife and I went to Teton and Yellowstone, 
when it gets to a certain point, I can't look down because, mm. you know, you because I like back in my head, I'm like, yo, like if you miss one step, bro, you are done. <laughs> wow. Yo, like, bro, ain't no coming back from this one for me. Bro, just bro. imagine I was driving in the mountains in Wyoming and they had, we were driving through the mountains. The first thing that went through my mind, there's no railings, there's no guards on the, on the, on, in the mountain the, on the road. And I'm like, yo, Oh, why would they do that first thing yeah the first thing that goes to my mind like this sounds bad right i was like i wonder how many people die off this road a year oh gosh like, I already messed yeah up. i know i was like bro like because if you make one mistake one turn like you are off the ledge bro like i told my wife i was like don't talk to me right now and i was <laughs> you know straight ahead bro my eyes were looking straight ahead and i did not look left or right i was just driving i was like don't talk babe you see this picture <laughs> on my phone look at this like, don't picture talk on to my me phone. right now i was like don't no, talk stop to it me right now it stop was so it. it was so bad but yeah that's one thing that you know you would not catch me doing any like jumping off the plane no nope. skydiving nah not me man <laughs> i'm the wrong one for that i know like, i got jump. a perfect spot for fran the next time you're in, in the tri-state i'm gonna take you to edge nyc and hudson yards basically it's like one of the tallest buildings here and it's a platform that extends outside of the building so he it's actually go. like a glass floor <laughs> so all you see is just the abyss below you waiting for you that plunge at the bottom Bro, of the glass even platform. even even looking at it on on my phone my 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 heart is pumping like oh like wow. that's how I like that bad yo like yo like it's terrible bro like mm. yeah you not find me doing no jumping bungee jumping nothing nothing crazy like that like i'm like i'm staying my black ass out of on the flat surface so Facts. but yeah <laughs> oh wow uh well for me um that's funny because i actually used to have a fear of heights too but you know i've kind of like convinced myself that i don't <laughs> <laughs> convince yourself how, yes. how did you do that <laughs> I know. basically i used to just like i don't know I, I, all right so actually my real fear i have a fear of fear because i hate being a like i i i, I when I start feeling like I'm afraid of something, it makes me feel like I'm uncomfortable. But my response is not actually to get away from it. It's kind of the opposite. I try to run towards it. So I tend to have like a fear of being, I don't like being, I don't like being in a, a state of being afraid of things. But like, so that's why when I was afraid of, like I started realizing, I was like, oh, it's high up hell. It's high as hell. I'm like, <laughs> so I started doing like, um, we went on a balloon ride. I did um, bungee jumping. I did skydiving. What? You did? Um, yeah, I've done skydiving when? twice. When was it? Yeah, this what? Was a few years ago, bro. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He shared a, a dorm room with me. Yeah, he's there. He's a fear, <laughs> I was a fear of conquerer. This. I was yeah. afraid of Swansea. Because, my... because do, do, you, do your parents know about this? I know your parents know about this. Yeah, you're right. No, oh, parents know about that. I'm oh, sorry. so, wow. you know, because even my oh, so even my youngest sister, you know, who's uh, afraid, she's she's afraid of heights, too. And then she just recently jumped out of a plane, too. Yeah, I think <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I was impressed. Yeah. Okay. yeah so, I mean, so that's one thing. Um, I don't think that's I'll be honest. I don't think that's healthy. But but it's just like I just hate the fact of being afraid of stuff. But um, I have a question real quick. Did you also notice how the body responds to like fear and anxiousness as well? Yeah, like yeah. every time, like before that Japan trip you and I took, I probably took the biggest dump in my life. Oh I yeah, I was like, my stomach was like, I was like, oh my God, like what's going on? Like every time before a flight, I don't know what it is, but my hmm. body is just like, I just drank a gallon of whole milk or something, bro. It's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be afraid of I used to be afraid of planes too, bro. But then it was like I need to do this for job for my for my job, so I need to just suck it up. And it was like you know, like what's the worst thing that could happen? You know? Yeah. Well, you die. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, death. <laughs> but mean? then at that point, but I think part of it is like anyway, we'll get into like solutions and stuff. But for me, part of it was just telling myself in some situations that it, there's nothing you could really do if that happens. You know what I mean? So. So it was yeah. like, so when that happens, it's like, um, just, just like effort, man. Just let's, yeah, let's but deal with if, it. yeah, but then that ties to what Glenn says, like, you know, like the fear of not being able to accomplish all the things that you kind of set forth. 
for yourself, right? But and if okay. you put if you're putting yourself in a situation where it's like your risk, the you know, you're putting yourself in in a highly risky situation at all times, or in more in more chance in more times than you should, you know, you increase your chances of like not the in inability to accomplish some of those goals because if you die, then you die. Then you don't really get, you don't really get, you don't get to come back and finish those items. So well. in challenging one of my fears, I may actually hit another fear. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, I also do have a fear of like the unachieved, the unaccomplished. But um, I don't know. But I do have another fear that I also think is kind of, which is actually I think also kind of unhealthy, is I have a fear of letting people down. Like mm-hmm. that's one of my biggest fears. I, I just don't like letting people down i don't like disappointing people i don't like you know putting people in uncomfortable positions you know i don't like being the cause of anyone's kind of like poor state of being so that's just like and it actually is pretty bad so and that's interesting that you mentioned that because that's actually one of the seven archetypes of fear and that's the self-doubter and basically that's the you're dominated by fear of not being good enough and Mm -hmm. It's with those people out there listening, you know, their fear may not be hopelessness or failure, but a lot of these are actually tied to those archetypes. If you want me to run through them real quick. Yeah, do it, do it. You bet. So basically there was a article I read on shineup.com. Credits go to Aisha Bo. And also the doctor that conducted this study's name was Ruth Sukop. And there was also some additional notes by psychologist Alicia Hodge. And basically Dr. Sukop did a study um, and there's also a book out there I'll drop in the description for everyone to get as well, if you're interested in reading more, where she interviewed a whole bunch of people and they actually boiled it down that there were seven archetypes of fear that are common throughout us. And the first one was being the procrastinator that often obsess, and I'm guilty of it, of the end product or outcome of whatever they're doing and they insist on it on being perfect. So what you end up doing is you spend a lot of time doing the research and planning, but you never actually execute the thing that you set out to do, all because you're afraid of it not being good enough. And another archetype was the rule follower. There's basically someone that dedicates themselves to following distinct rules and guidelines established by people around them. So Hmm. basically, they're always obsessed with trying to make the right decision, despite the effects adverse, usually, that it may have upon them. So Hmm. I think I think I'm good to this one. Yep. The next one was the people pleaser. Um, People pleasers (laughs) struggle with the fear of being judged and worry about disappointing others as well. And they usually have a hard time setting boundaries. I think that also goes into the self doubter. So Uh you find like you're someone that's always out to get gain people's acceptance and always kind of like that blind loyalty that we were talking about, Uh (laughs) taking that, (laughs) you know, putting your your butt on the line. You could have that people pleaser fear. Mm. Uh, getting down to the last few the outcasts basically are typically those that tend to be fearless on the outside that could usually be the people that always do a little extra right well those are the people that are always uh have the biggest fear of rejection so it's better to reject others than to worry about being accepted by others so it's like you're basically kind of uh pushing out what you fear the most Um, so basically it's like, I'm gonna reject everyone because I'm afraid I won't be accepted by them. So that's the outcast. Then we have the self doubter basically mentioned before not being good enough. We have the excuse maker. (laughs) Basically they have difficulty taking responsibility for their life choices and goals. And basically they're always afraid to step up or never doing their part. They have issues with accountability. Mm. That's mm-hmm. an interesting fear. Uh. <laughs> and then lastly, <laughs> afraid the to be accountable. That's crazy. <laughs> what? That's a like, uh, I don't want to do this. Let me oh, but that's something. true because you don't want all the responsibility. So you're, exactly. You're... Okay. That makes and sense. And last but not least, the pessimist. And I think we all know somebody that's the Nancy, negative Nancy, as they say, mm-hmm. basically struggles with the fear of adversity and hardship. So basically, you can never go through something if you never attend to it, right? If everything uh-huh. is bad, nothing's bad, right? How much? How can you go from worse to this? What's the superlative? Life is so worse? sad. <laughs> exactly. So those are the seven archetypes. We'll, we'll definitely probably end up talking through how to resolve some of these once you get to the end, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there for everybody. No, thank you. That was really, really, you know, a really good educational piece because, um, I think everyone who's listening can probably relate with at least one of those. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's kind of interesting because as we kind of talk about our fears and, you know, all the things that we've, and all the different types of archetypes of fears, 
what happens when you're exposed to your fears? Like, do you, I mean, curl into a little ball, you know, stick your head in the ground, you know, punching things? Like, what happens? Like, don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, I guess, um, yeah, for me, when it, yeah, like the height stuff I was talking about earlier, you know, it just, it's like the, the blood flow just go crazy. My heart is pumping. I feel like my heart is about to jump out of my body, bro. Like it's it's really Damn. bad. It's really bad. And you know, it just no, it's so bad that like I can feel it even just watching a movie too, like watching a screen, and I and I get like scared for that person. And I kind of like I feel like I transport myself into that space, and you can just I just feel like, like oh my god, this is terrible. So, but yeah, I don't have really I haven't really. Uh, made an effort to combat it or even find a way to to get stronger in that at that part of my weakness but my fear but it is it is i guess it's, it's just something that i've i've just been living with i just it's not detrimental to my life i don't think so and it's not impacting me from doing the things that i want to do at least that i've i find value in so unless they ask you to grab something off the top shelf then we have a problem <laughs> yeah. well that's because i'm not tall enough then i just gotta grab the ladder <laughs> it's cool. the <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna take no. him to edge i'm just gonna like just push him like yo friend i got a surprise <laughs> for you push him don't, out don't, there <laughs> Pushing, that's not that. No, you don't want to push somebody, man. I'm that, I'm that pair, right? Man, I'll, I'll swim. I got you. I'll, I'll sue your ass, Glenn. I'm suing you. I can just pass out, like, bro, there's the ground. You're good. You're you're leveled, bro. You're good. Yeah. But, like, but as far as, like, I know fear, the fear of failure, though, you know, like, usually, you know, you just kind of get tense, you know. And I, and I think sometimes when you, like, do maybe even presentation, you know, Glenn was talking about, like, when you, even try and get on a flight, you know, how you're you just like all the emotions, like maybe maybe throwing up or having having to use the bathroom, <laughs> like clenching up, <laughs> like <laughs> booty, <laughs> like getting real tight. Booty, booty clenching. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, I know for me, like when it's so weird though, like when I'm about to like present at work, sometimes I just feel like just my lips just get real dry. And the mm -hmm. weird part is, as soon as I start and I get going, I'm good. Is that early, that first, like, 30 seconds, man, if I could just get through that, I know I'm good after that. It's like, that first, just that, like, just for saying that first, like, hello, my name is Francis, blah, blah, blah. And I think one of the issue with that, like, you know, I mentioned this before. So one of the fears I also have, because I stutter sometimes, and and I've I've kind of talked about this before. I know a lot of people when I share that with them, they don't like really you do, is because I've I've worked through through it over the years and gotten better to like fight it and not. So a lot of people don't really know, but I know internally, you know, some of the challenges that comes with that. Because I mean, mm -hmm. just imagine growing up like before I can say one word, I have to like slap my leg like ah, 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 ah. so it's like so bad. So just imagine that same person. You know, it's, it's been placed in a like in a corporate setting, like you know, you know, in more in a leadership space where you you have a responsibility to present stuff to like leadership or even within your team, and you always kind of like back in your mind, like okay, I don't want to like stumble my first word, you know, kind of like so. So it's just I know, but like it's just you know, you know, like what happens with that? Your lips kind of get you know gets real dry. You mm -hmm. start like thinking like I don't want to mess this up. And you get and then and I think that actually even sometimes make you even mess up more because you yeah. over you yeah. overthink yeah. it a little bit more so but yeah that's really listeners have no idea how many takes it takes me so <laughs> Bro, you hit record and you're on you're like up that's all folks um, um, like man that's one crusty negro his mouth getting dry his lips dry what's going on he was just cool a minute ago yeah but... i know it's crazy how that works right <laughs> no for real what about you slap but you know what's crazy? Let's add on to that real quick. Like glossophobia or fear of public speaking, I believe, is uh, the mo mo more fear than death itself. Like heights and all that is all attributed to the fear of that, you know, you see your expiration date. But mm -hmm. believe it or not, fear of public speaking is the highest, is more fear than death itself. And that's pretty strange because it ain't going to kill you, bro. But <laughs> I would say like definitely what helped me with my fears, apart from maybe like, 
arachnophobia. Like, I'm not afraid of spiders. I just don't want to get bit by one. But in most cases, it's kind of like, you know, how you perceive that fear when it comes to like personal development things like failure and hopelessness, which are probably the biggest ones for me and the biggest ones for a lot of people. I just change my perspective on it. I think the best way to, to view them is essentially you take note of how your body's responding to the situation. And I hate that, especially sometimes when I get an email from like my, my director or my boss and I'm like, well, damn, I see the exclamation points already. And I'm just like, you know, I recognize how my body's responding to the anticipation of what may be in this email. And a lot of times it's nothing. Or a lot of times you know, I just end up <laughs> just blowing it over because like, ah, whatever, he's just being his or her old self. But mm-hmm. um, I feel like it's essential to really take note of how your body's responding to something, right? And really acknowledge it and just kind of make a note of it and just say, hey, why am I feeling like this? Maybe I need to take a deep breath. And then another thing is also realizing that, you know, I personally view adversity as a step stool. Like, I feel like if there's any situation that I can get over, it's going to make me stronger in a sense. You know, as they say, the adage, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I, I wholeheartedly believe in that in all aspects and forms. So, you know, to this day, glory be to God. And, you know, knowing that he's watching over me, watching all over us, I welcome adversity because it's just like, not saying that, you know, I'm not, I don't pay my taxes and handle what I need to handle, but it's just like, you know, so some things you just recognize that you can't control, right? But I can control how I react to the situation. So I always kind of take a mental note of that and try to say, hey, here's how I can improve that. Here's what I should do moving forward because I just hate the idea that another person can trigger these responses out of me and they're just a human being. So it's like regaining control of myself and my composure, I feel like are the key things. And the first thing you need to do when you're gripped with something that you're afraid of, is it really gonna kill you? You know, is there a way over it? You know, is there <laughs> something you could have done better? There's a lot of the chances the answer to that, you know, you know the answer already. I get the majority of the time. Yeah, <laughs> Unless it's with height. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's real, man. I think there's some things that's more practical though, like especially like self-development stuff like that. I think it's easier to to pinpoint like, okay, this is like, okay, I feel this way when this is happening and this is what I should do to combat it. You know, if, if it's a presentation, if it's, you know, your lips is quivering or it's getting dry, you know, maybe you need to drink water or just kind of take that deep breath. Like, cause even like when you talk to the most, the, that, you know, one of the most iconic public speakers, they, they all talk about like, they still get nervous right before mm-hmm. they go out That's there. Crazy. So it's, yeah. so it's normal to feel that way. And I think sometimes we have to define, you know, what, what our failure, like what, what success looks like for us. You know, sometimes maybe we are comparing ourselves to other people. And then sometimes if we don't maybe meet, live up to that, like the person we're comparing ourselves to, we feel like we failed. And sometimes it's like, and we have scared of what that looks like to other people and how we put people would judge us and stuff like that and and i think we just like if we just kind of maybe change the lens of it a little bit you know and at least for me you know like you know working on on me you know like i talked about like just the com- the conversation having conversation piece you know one of the way that i've learned to like overcome my stuttering over the years is having jobs that have forced me to talk you know, like I've, I've had customer service jobs and, you know, is that's the worst job you can have for someone who stuttered. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like where's my order? <laughs> where's my order? <laughs> you know, like, but it's like, it's, it's so crazy. Make though, it but, a large. <laughs> you know, like, you know, not like, but like, like more corporate phone jobs or even stuff like I've done that oh, in the past. So like, it's forced me to like really find ways to, to properly just engage with people and yeah. know like some like my triggers and stuff like that so so for me I, I don't know I think putting yourself in that moment of actual what makes you fearful is where the strength comes in like you know Draymond Green I always say stand in it you know you have to stand on it like you have to like let, let it just kind of like push you over sometimes and you have to just learn to keep just get just keep staying getting up and do it all over again, you know? Yeah, man, that's some good advice that you guys have given and some good examples. Um, I think even for me too, um, like I said, I, I do tend to like challenge myself when I realize I'm afraid of something or when I feel like I'm afraid of something. Um, I think that it, you know, to, you know, Slossy's point, you know, I think it's really important to take 
you know, take stock of yourself and kind of at least gauge like what is going on with yourself, what's going on with your body, what's going on with your mind, like how are you feeling, like what's causing this, like how are you reacting? Because then you can kind of self-identify like, okay, this is fear. This is, you know, now it's like, okay, is this healthy? You know, is this something that I can manage? Is it something I can work around? Um, and I don't say, I don't think anybody should just, you know, like, oh, I'm afraid of heights. I'm just going to go jump off a cliff. Prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't afraid of you. Heights. Shout out to Chunks. Yeah, that's chunks <laughs> no, shout out to method. Chunks jumping yeah, off a cliff. Definitely with his middle fingers in the like air. <laughs> <laughs> you thought I was afraid of this? You know, what not I mean? pushing anyone to the deep end, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm not saying to take it to that extreme. Um, I've kind of gotten to a habit of always kind of doing this. I mean, even when I was a kid, I mean, I was afraid of the dark. Um, and I used to actually like my my parents are like put on a nightlight, and I used to just get up. And I used to just turn off the nightlight and I was like, you know what? It's something about to happen to me. It's about to happen, bro. You know, like whatever's about to snatch me up, it's gonna snatch me up. And then after a while, this <laughs> is like nothing snatching me up. All right, cool. So I ain't afraid of the dark no more. I mean, and I'm not saying that that should that's how everybody should approach it, but I'm saying that you should definitely take stock of yourself and then try to work around your fears or try to challenge your fears in the sense of kind of at least get control of it. Don't let it have control of you. You know what I mean? In my opinion, that's my approach. So like, even for me, like I said, I have a real big fear. Like this is, and this is something I guess is maybe just because of like all the responsibilities and all the, you know, family and everybody I, I care so much about, like everybody's so close to me. I just, it really, I really hate letting them down, but I've learned to challenge that fear by being more honest and being more like transparent with like what I'm feeling, what's going on in my head. Facts. And I think the one part for me though, is just that, and now I say I have a fear of fears. So now this is also kind of complicated because my fear of fear makes me approach things that I'm afraid of in a little bit of aggressive way. You know, like sometimes I don't want to like let my parents down. So, but like, I know that I'm afraid of letting my parents down. So I approach it in an aggressive way. Like, hey mom, dad, this is what's up. This was, it's not gonna happen. This is how it's gonna be. All right? What do you mean? It's not going to happen. <laughs> what is it gonna be? What is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think that you know, after some time, I'm calibrating and calibrating and calibrating and learning how to communicate it better, so that way that that doesn't take a hold of me either. You know, but you know, I think. But again, even like the fear that I have a fear, I, again, I approach it way too aggressive too. So I need to continue to work on that part of me. <laughs> But I think we've kind of given everybody some really good examples, some good tips. And, you know, as you know, as our listeners, as you guys are, you know, I know everybody has something that they're afraid of, you know, just always kind of seek help, have a conversation. And it kind of makes me kind of turn to this part, you know. Um, so prior to, you know, like this conversation, you know, with the whole world listening, all of our listeners, you know, um, who knows about your fears and do they help? By do they better? I guess having them know about your fears does that better it or does that worsen it? Let's go with you, Slas. All right. So I definitely feel like with these things, it's definitely important. And I said definitely three times now. Definitely, uh, definitely. To take to take note of who you reveal these things to. It's like to me, mm. it, it's important to these type these things need to be fostered. Um, responsibly so you know if you have a, a fear of heights you don't want me to know that because i just might put you on the edge <laughs> and put some yards. so it's definitely Brand, good to take out. note i know right <laughs> but no nah, respectfully i wouldn't do that but uh <laughs> am i just um, putting him in a no i might give him a chokehold or something <laughs> <laughs> no put him in a box with a spider <laughs> know, right? oh yeah oh, that part. <laughs> try to get me on a wave runner right so <laughs> with no guess <laughs> no. so um, all right, all right I'm done, I'm done. Nah, it's all good. yeah yeah keep going bro sorry so yeah back to that yeah it's definitely per important to know who you're revealing these things to and i feel like it's okay to share fear is a natural thing it's a natural body response a physiological mm -hmm. response it's completely fine so I think once you accept that as an individual, that'll help in your progress of addressing them and growing stronger with them. Um, but apart from that, yeah, do take note who you reveal them to. Uh, is, to me, it's just like your crypto, you know, code. I wouldn't just give it to everybody, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> yeah, definitely do that. Oh, but most boy. importantly, like once more as being referenced, take that stock in yourself. Be real with yourself. You know what I mean? Like we're human. We have limits. If your thing is people pleasing, understand that, yo, set your boundaries. You can only do so much. Like put you first, and I think in all cases. And, you know, if you put you first, you're able to then give to others in a better way. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't put yourself first, your own care first, you're going to give everybody mediocre a half. If you put yourself first, man, to maintain, manage yourself and relationships around you, those are very important. Because that also fosters our understanding and what we believe and how we develop as people, then you're set. Mm. Yeah, great point. No, yeah, I definitely think it's important to, especially if you're in like in a relationship or, you know, you have trusted partners or trust, like it can be your friends, family members, loved ones. But I think it's really important to share those because sometimes if you are like, for example, if you are that person that likes to, you know, people pleaser, you know, and your, your loved ones or even your spouse or your partner knows that they can help guide you or even like look out, look out for you in those situations. So like that is one, like one of those key, really key moments where it does comes into play to, to share that information. You know, to kind of use myself as an example, going back to like the communication and stuttering stuff. Well, one of the things I did when I first, when I was like early in my career, when I knew like, you know, like, you know, I have conversation with my managers about it because I learned that I have to be, it's not something that I share with a lot of people like growing up, but like the people that I trusted, I let them know like what my, what struggles that I have. And, and it's, it's good when you share that information, it actually empowers you because uh -huh. you know, like, okay, like, especially for me sharing it with my boss, I know like, okay, my boss knows like what I'm, what I'm struggling, what I'm trying to overcome. So like me and her can like have a conversation. We, we never actually really talk about it. Cause I think she, like, I don't know. She always thought, told me I did an amazing job. Like, you know, so it was really, really encouraging to get those positive feedback mm -hmm. when you are like trying to, when you are in the, in the process of self-improvement, because it, it encourages you to keep going, keep going. And you, you find yourself like overcoming these challenges that you have. And for me, getting those encouraging for like from past board bosses really gave me the strength to like know, okay, I'm I'm improving, I'm getting better, and I'm and like now I'm at a point where if I don't tell nobody, nobody wouldn't, wouldn't even know, right? So mm -hmm. and so yeah, so that's why like I definitely encourage people to share it with people that you trust. And I think Glenn kind of said it, no, you shared it with, but I think it's positive. It's 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 good to let people know though, like. But it just has to be people you trust for sure. And that's interesting too, because yeah. for me, and I, well, it's interesting the 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 way that you both approached it because I, I I agree from the perspective of because it is your fear, it is your kryptonite. And having you know the wrong person, you know, have access to that information and then they kind of use it against you, mm -hmm. you know. But then you have other people that, you know, that they truly care about you and you share with them. I first, first of all, one, it goes back to all the way back when we were talking about, you know, loyalty and respect. You know, that's the respect part right there, because now you, you respect that person enough to kind of share your fears with them. And then they kind of and you kind of have trust in them that they're going to support you and have a good relationship out of it. <laughs> Excuse me. But then also with the enemies and people that may use it against you. And I hear all that angle, but the truth of it for me, I've kind of learned about myself that sharing things make things, makes things more therapeutic for me. And it's weird how, like, if someone knows about my fears, I, it's, it makes it easier. For, it makes it easier for me to say, okay, now it's out in the public. Everybody has access to what I'm afraid of. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to let that be a weakness anymore, you know, and that's how I tend to look at it, you know, so letting it be out and then people are like, ah, he's afraid of this. I'm going to try to use this against him. It's just going to help challenge me to get over it sooner, to get over it quicker so that it's not as much a fear for me, you know? So yeah, it may be a fear now that we're talking about it, but next time we probably come around with having a, you know, self help, you know, conversation <laughs> or a mental health conversation, and it probably won't even come up again because I'll have, you know, overcome that, you know? Yeah. And if I may, essentially, the end goal is to for your fears to no longer be fears. So mm -hmm. 
it's not like this perpetuating constant and per perpetuity cycle of fear after fear compounding after the next the idea is you share it you reveal it but sometimes it's not as simple as just saying it right sometimes we don't yeah. even know these things right mm -hmm. like i remember my sister and we always bounce business ideas off of each other and then shout out to eventology and i was sharing another idea with her and you know she's become like somewhat my confidant as being a business owner and she's uh -huh. like bro you know you got good ideas just do the shit man <laughs> she was like, like <laughs> just stop talking about it and you just do it like you know if they say no they say no like mm -hmm. they don't even go to die you know what i mean and coming back to that procrastinator fear it was always that idea that you know allowing people to see that part of you people that have been around you will notice it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you know, it's important to keep the good, solid people on your team. And yeah, sometimes it's not as always as simple as identifying. Now, maybe after hearing this recording, somebody will be like, you know what? I heard that and it makes sense now. But it's sometimes it's not that easy. Like, ah, I'm a self-doubter. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's really important, though, like, like for me, like, I don't have any desire to really work on my fear of height but mm. like i say cuz i don't feel like it's having any really impact on the quality of my life or like mm -hmm. so like and i think that's also a key factor because if you don't have any desire to actually improve your fears you know and i think that could it could be a good or a bad thing cuz as well i think um it's an interesting con concept or conversation because yeah i mean i i hope you know, if your fears is like impacting you from progressing in life or, you know, able to do the things that you actually want to do as far as chasing your dreams, uh -huh. it's impacting you from like going to the next step of your, of your, of your personal life or your career, career, uh, as far as career goes, you know, I think it's critical to work on those fears, but, um, but there are some fears I thought uh, that I do think it's okay to leave as is if it doesn't have any impact on your well-being so that's uh, i guess i wonder what you guys think about that do you guys feel like every fear should be addressed or set as a goal to to improve or could you leave some fears as you know as just one of those things that you know what it is what it is yeah i would say like realistically you may never have to deal with the fear of heights right like unless it probably came to a a life or death situation and you have to pick like uh -huh. hey, am i gonna get over this today you know am i gonna perish <laughs> like i think if it comes to that <laughs> you know either for yourself or your family or someone that you love or care for you gotta you're gripped with that so like for me personally the only fear i want is the fear of god i think that's the only uh -huh. fear that's going to push me through and it's essential 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 for you know living a fulfilling life as far as a christian but at the same time, I think it is important to gradually become better and grow and try to get over them. But if you don't have to put yourself in that situation, then definitely don't go seeking them out. Clearly, you can still live a fulfilling life without going to Edge at Hudson Yards, even though I would recommend it. <laughs> or without taking that wave runner, especially now with these sharks becoming a lot more prevalent, you may want to consider reconsider going to the beach, period. So yeah. or getting in the water, at least. So. Yeah, I don't think like you have to thrust yourself into things unless it's absolutely vital. Like if you want to become a, you want to fly planes or if you want to become a Navy SEAL, then yeah, it would be conducive to get over these fears. Otherwise, it's going to hinder your growth. But anytime it's going to hinder you, then for sure. But if not, if you're fine, you know, then no, no need. And I think that's really, I think that's really important because I mean, I'm not saying again, I, I think I've said it already, but I'm not saying that you got to take your fear and then you got to run at it, you know, close your eyes and just, like, just <laughs> run straight at it, you know, <laughs> head down. Like I'm gonna run through this fear. Like you don't have to be that, but you know, I think again, if, if your fear has some form of limiting capacity or limiting aspect to your life, you know, I think it's important to just take stock of it take stock, at least one, you need to know what you're, I mean, I think you need to know if you're definitively afraid of it, in my opinion. And I think you need to know what kind of triggers those things. 
um, or, or, or what kind of responses your body is going to have. So that way, when you do come into that situation, you're like, okay, oh, this is it. This is the moment. This is fear right now. This is it's hitting me. <laughs> this is that situation. Yep. Oh, here comes the sweats. Here comes the, oh, oh, okay. Here comes the dry mouth. All right. All right. Right on time. <laughs> the bubble guts. The bubble gut. The booty. <laughs> oh, oh, exactly. Like, you know, you're afraid of, you know, you're afraid of flight, uh, of flying or something like that. Oh, boy. Don't eat before you get on the plane. Like, I want to like, go to Puerto I'm, Rico, dog. Come on. <laughs> that's what I'm talking Let's about. Let's like, do those it. Type of things. Yeah, we trying. To, yeah, mm-hmm. we're gonna do a recording for Puerto Rico. Let's go. I'm down. Let's go. But I'm saying, like, you don't necessarily have to tackle every fear. But I think the how it how it impacts you, how it you know affects you, or maybe limit you. You don't want it to paralyze you. Like you can't. Oh, I can't talk because now I have a fear of talking. Carry a bottle of water. Be prepared for that situation. You know, um, I, I have a fear of flying is going to give me bubble guts. Don't eat right before you get on the plane. <laughs> it's just like take those, learn those things and like how it imp- impacts your body. So at least you can navigate it so you can continue to like move on within life. You know what I mean? So one last question before we kind of close everything out. You know, and I think I really kind of just jumped in, you know, given some already, but what advice would you guys give to anyone who's struggling to manage their own fears? Yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll go first so Glenn can close it out. Mm. Yeah, no, I would just say, like, I mean, you have to just uh, control the things you can control and don't let, don't let the things you can't uh, paralyze you, you know? But I think ultimately to uh, to overcome your fears, I think is it's really important to just face them. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to, you have to put, if you can put yourself in those situations and you constantly work at it, I think you will get better at it. You know, I was watching a video on YouTube actually not too long ago, because I have uh, what they call jumper knees. And, and it's like, you know, when you have chronic knee pains, right. From playing mm-hmm. basketball or jumping over the, over the years, whatever. Right. So what the video was kind of talking about was, you have to kind of slowly increase the load of your knee to improve it. So like, I have to like constantly kind of put, apply pressure and load on it. Then I gradually increase the, the, the load that I place on it to improve, to help heal my knee, to get it better. And I think the same ideology applies to like facing and working on our fears. It's like, I think you have to start with a small dose, then you over, over time increase, you know, whatever that thing is, right? And over time, you hope to like you'll hopefully overcome it. So I'll leave it at that and let and let Glenn Great wrap job. us up. Great job. Yeah, definitely. So I'll start riding behind Francis on the wave runner first <laughs> before I take the full plunge. If anything happens, I'll blame Francis. Like, yes, Francis. <laughs> But, but I would say for myself, I definitely great gem there, Fran, for sure. Uh, I like to follow this acronym called a SMART model. And it also refers back to the study. This is by a psychologist, uh, Dr. Hodge. And basically, it's an acronym for S specific, M measurable, A attainable, R relevant, and T timely. So especially when it comes to if you're someone that fears, you know, achieving your goals, and you find that you're constantly making excuses for why you can't do something. First, specify what it is that you're setting out to do. Measure, scale it. Are you actually able to achieve it? If that's uh-huh. the case, set a plan or have someone help you set a plan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Work with someone to make it definable. Attain it. Go after it. You know, don't, 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 don't rush in, but at the same time, don't hold yourself back. You know, take proactive steps gradually and going back to Francis, small loads before you go heavy to achieve it. Relevant. Is it going to happen now? Is it going to take place now? Why do you want to do this? And I think the uh, another thing is answering the why. Could it be for personal reasons? Are you fitting a need? What is it? And also timely, constant steps, proactively seeking it. You know what I mean? Keeping yourself accountable. And at the end of the day, I think it's the goal is to live a life not fearing your fears. You know what I mean? Understanding that it's a natural response to life. And a lot of the times, it has saved some lives. You know what I mean? So being able to acknowledge it is not holding you back. If you're a fellow out there, you're not a simp. If you have a fear or something, it's completely fine and practical. I think a lot of us are personally holding traumas and experiences that we haven't been able to express. 
And, and if you're in your adult years, you're doing that. I feel like it's really relevant for our demographic in particular, you know, <laughs> if you know what I mean, going back to <laughs> laying hands on your kids, there's a lot of fear you got to unpack there as well. Uh -huh. And it starts at home as well. So if you're the parents out there, reassure your children. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with you. That's life. You know what I mean? And for me personally, that's my whole take on it. Wow. As you guys have heard it from these two gentlemen here, you know, as Lassie said, you know, be smart about your fears. And that's mm -hmm. a play on words because it refers to the acronym. <laughs> hey, be smart about your fears, you know, and as you kind of continue to approach them and if you, you know, there's nothing wrong with seeking help, nothing wrong with getting a little bit of guidance, getting counseling if you need it. And as you kind of challenge yourself, you know, do it gradually. Low management, as Fran said. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there's, again, you don't have to do it alone. And, you know, always kind of do everything in a kind of a safe space. And as you continue to strive and push yourself to overcome your fears, maybe those fears will kind of turn into great accomplishments, something that you can praise yourself and be proud of yourself in days to come. For more content or to learn more about the podcast, feel free to check us out at Jerk Jaloff Collard Pod on Instagram. Podcast episodes drop every Wednesday. Stay tuned for the outro coming right after this to learn additional ways to reach us and to send us your feedback. Be sure to like, share, follow, and subscribe. Like what you're hearing? Feel free to leave us a review on your preferred streaming platform of choice. See you all again next week. Peace. Hey, that was Don't. clean too, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Is, man, you're a pro now. Yeah. <laughs> And that concludes today's episode, but that doesn't mean the conversation has to end. As a matter of fact, feel free to check us out at JJC Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter for our post-discussion question following the release of this episode. If you are a Black or minority business owner or professional that would like to be featured on the Rep Yours segment of our show, or a listener with some general feedback for the podcast panel, feel free to shoot us an email at jjcpod at gmail.com. As always, likes and comments are always appreciated. Be sure to subscribe or follow to be notified when the next episode releases. And until then, stay safe, stay blessed, peace.